There are 73,000 head of sheep and lambs in Virginia, and many of them are born in late January and early February. That's a potentially harsh time for a baby animal to be born outside, so sheep producers take extra steps to care for them. Wintertime, it's very important that they lamb inside. You're dealing with a small animal that weighs lots, lots of times less than 10 pounds, and it's a very, that animal gets cold, the core temperature can go down really quickly. So it's important that they're inside and we have them come in the barn when they lamb. Uh, hopefully they're inside all the time, but a lot of times the ewes will sneak outside and they may lamb outside. But if they lamb outside on a day like today, on the snow and on the ice, the chances of that little animal making it are not real good. David Shifflin of Augusta County has 300 head of sheep and lambs on his farm. He and his family raised two breeds of sheep for the meat market to sell as breeding stock and for young people to buy as show animals. A retired agriculture instructor and FFA advisor, he's been caring for sheep for decades. In the wintertime when the forage is not available, and when we're lambing, yes, they get, they get fed pretty good. They have to or they're not going to produce. And if you don't take care of them, you end up with little weak lambs and you know, they don't milk well and they don't grow well. So you know, it's a twice a day operation every day and it doesn't matter whether it's snow up to your knees or whether it's below zero, they've still got to eat and drink. So you're out here every day, twice a day, taking care of the animals. Shiflet says his black-faced Suffolk breed sheep typically give birth in the fall, but the white-faced Dorset sheep lamb in early spring to avoid pregnancy during hot weather. Shiflet has a system for new lambs. They spend a few days penned just with their mothers to get used to each other. Then they mix together in a larger pen before being turned loose outside. Most of the time, young lambs adjust quickly, but there are always a few that need extra help. Those are the ones that usually cost as much to raise as they're worth, but sheep producers care for them just the same. We've got a few orphans this year. Uh, you get orphans for different reasons. Uh, if a lamb is cold, and sometimes we'll have to take them and put them in what we call a hot box, uh, which is a heating pad, and we put a towel on the heating pad, put the lamb in, and we'll cover the lamb up with another towel and put them in there to get them warm. After you do that, sometimes you won't take them back. They don't want them. Uh, you may have a situation where you have a ewe that doesn't have enough milk for maybe two or three lambs and you've got an orphan of that group. Or there are times when you'll have a ewe that will die for whatever reason and you've got her lambs to raise. So um, we do end up with some orphans for various reasons and Yes, they take a lot of time. They've got to be fed several times a day. Decades ago, sheep wool was a valuable commodity and farmers sold it by the pound. Shifflet says today, wool is not very valuable, but the market for lamb meat is growing, particularly among some ethnic communities. A lot of ours that goes to the restaurant trade, I'm sure some of that goes to the ethnic market. Uh, we haven't tapped into that market locally. Uh, it's just that we haven't, haven't needed to. Some people do, some, some producers uh, cater more to an ethnic market. Uh, we sell some to local restaurants here, you know, in the valley that, uh, and we're seeing more people, uh, particularly some, some of the millennials are liking lamb. And I, I don't know, hopefully more and more of them will. Americans as a whole uh, don't eat a lot per capita of lamb but it is a very good meat protein source. Sheep were among the very first livestock brought to colonial Virginia, and sheep used to be a mainstay of farming in the mountains of the Old Dominion. That changed after the end of World War II as the sheep industry shifted west. Beginning in the 1980s, Virginia's sheep numbers declined significantly as the price of wool shrank, prices shrank, older producers aged out, and predators like coyotes hit profits hard. Sheep and lambs are not major money makers anymore, but Shifflet says it's worth raising them even if they don't make a lot of money. Oh, we enjoy doing it. And you know, you, you like to think that you don't do it just for the fun of it. It has to be profitable. And you know, we've, it, it can be profitable, but it takes a lot of work. And it can be frustrating at times when you work with a lamb and you work with him and you work with him. And, 
he still doesn't make it. You know, it, it can be frustrating. But uh, we enjoy doing it, and if we didn't, we wouldn't have them. While sheep and lambs are no longer common livestock for Virginia farmers, they can be a profitable niche market. And producers like Shiflet are dedicated to making sure their livestock are healthy and safe, no matter how cold the weather is. In Augusta County, Virginia, I'm Ricky Gibson reporting.